Let's continue to look at what happened here. Bear with me, my pages are flipping in the wind. <laughs> All right, and it goes on to say that Aaron took as Moses commanded. Let's stop right there. He didn't hesitate on that instruction, did he? It said that he took as Moses commanded. He wasn't trying to be the big cheese. He said, you know what, I'm gonna go and do what you said. Leaders and lead, those of you who are under leaders and you're serving your pastors, uh, five, four ministries, however you wanna put it, don't hesitate to obey. Delayed obedience is sin, selah. Okay, and it goes on to say, Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. He didn't have time to be dilly-dallying around with this. It didn't say he walked around casually. He thought about it. He got on his cell phone to call somebody to see if they could come into agreement with him in prayer to see if that was the perfect will of God. You have to be uh, with a leader that you trust the heart, that they have the heart of God to know that if they ask you to do something that is of the utmost importance, that you don't sit around and question that because people's lives may be hanging in the balance and at stake. And it may depend on your obedience. So what did he do? It says, and Moses and Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put an incense and made an atonement for the people. It didn't say that the plague was stopped at that point. The plague had begun. But he was in obedience because he ran. And he did what he, he told him to do. And it goes on to say, he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. Now, what is that telling us? Because of the children of Israel, what did they do? They murmured, they complained, they blamed Moses for what God did. That's almost like lying on God in a sense, because you're saying God didn't do that. And you know that God did it, but you're looking for somebody to blame. They blamed Moses. God did that. And it says that he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. Just think if Aaron would have said, you know what, let them die. They tripping on me and my brother. How many, how, many, how many leaders would say, well, you know what, you trip and get what you deserve? How many leaders would say, you know what, I'm going to stand between you and what you've said and what you've done, and I'm going to cry out that God will have mercy on you? And it goes on to say that now they that died in the plague were 14,700, besides them that died in the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. One thing I want to say about this, so we got 14,700 people that died. We have 250 elders in the congregation. We have Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and their families all dead because of one seed of rebellion that started in the heart of Korah. And then he went and got all these people to incite a rebellion. Look how many people died, but also look at it like this. Look at how many people didn't have to die. If God is dealing with you today, leader, congregant, lay person, servant, if God is dealing with you today about seeds of rebellion that you know is in your heart, put it on the altar and ask God to take it out. See, I believe that God wants to deal with you secretly before he has to deal with you openly. There are some seeds that need to come out. Even as leaders here in this region, let's search our hearts today. Ask God to search us to make sure that we're not inciting a rebellion. Because what's in the heart of the head is going to flow down. I'm going to give you an example. How many of your children act just like you in your household? They, have, they see mama do something. My daughter puts on her lipstick and baby girl, go get that little lipstick thing and try to put it on. What is she doing? She's mimicking her mother. Fathers, what are you teaching your children? What are they seeing you do? How are they seeing you talk to your wife? Wives, how do you respond to your husband? Children, how are you responding to your parents? All of that stuff matters to God. It's no little thing. When God laid down the law in the book, he meant what he said, Old Testament, all the way from end to amen. In other words, in the beginning to amen, say lot, it is finished in Revelation. God meant every word. And I want to just add one more thing. We can still glean from the Old Testament. Yes, we are New Testament, but I tell you what, we need to read this Old Testament. And really, if you don't have a fear for the Lord, go back and check out some of the things that happened to people when they disobeyed God. Yes, we are under grace and we are under mercy, but God is not playing. He's not playing with people. He's especially not playing with leaders who are leading his people. We have to walk holy, we have to walk upright, and we have to walk pure before God's people. Now, I want to just... Um, say a few more things and then we're going to wrap this session up. So let's talk about a little bit about prayer 
it's important, it's imperative that if we don't have a prayer life, we can't hear from God. Prayer is developing an intimacy with God. And Moses and Aaron, the priests, they commune with God. And if we as priests and kings in the earth realm are not communing with God and fellowshipping with him, we won't have the petition to pray. Don't you know that praying amiss is literally praying evil prayers? So what is that? I've never heard of that before. Praying what you want to pray, not seeking God for what's on his heart. He said, well, where is that in the Bible? I've never heard of such thing. Turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. And it talks about how the Holy Spirit aids us in prayer. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for. There you go. For, as, for we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when we pray, we have to first get the petition, not just what's on our heart all the time. There's times when we will bring our petitions to the Lord. But I will submit to you that even before you begin to pray and give all our stuff to God, say, Father, what is it on your heart that you want me to pray into existence? See, when we begin to pray selfless prayers, I didn't say selfish prayers, selfless prayers. When we begin to pray selflessly and pray on behalf of what God wants us to pray for, he'll begin to take care of our needs and the things that are on our heart. If we're taking care of God's business, he will take care of ours, even in prayer. If we move our needs and our stuff out of the way, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, even in prayer. If you're seeking the heart of God on what you need to pray for according to his will, that petition will come to pass. But if we're just praying, just putting things, oh God, I need a car, oh God, I need this, oh God, I need that. Is that really the petition that's on God's heart for you to pray? Or is that something that a carnal prayer that I want to pray. It says, likewise, the spirit help with our infirmities. We don't know what we should pray for. We don't know unless God tells us, unless God helps us. And this is a uh, new Testament. Hello. <laughs> we don't know what we should pray for as we are. And because he's making intercession for us according to the will of God. See, that's a key phrase right there. According to the will of God. And even in our prayer life, we want to be within the will of God while we're praying. And how can you be in the will of God while you pray? Sit down, get quiet before the Lord, and then say, Father, what do you want me to pray about today? What's on your heart for me to pray? What do you want me to pray into existence according to your will today? Forget about all my junk, all my stuff. What's on your heart? And then you, we will really begin to see things happen. Mark 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given, knock and it shall be, uh, you shall find, excuse me, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. There are things also that hinder people's prayers. Have you ever felt like I keep praying and praying God and my prayers are hindered? Well, according to the Bible, there are some things that causes our prayers to be hindered and not answered. Disobedience. Are you disobedient to the Lord? When he speaks to you, do you do what he say? Where is that found? Look at Deuteronomy 145. Disobedience, secret sin, stuff that you think don't nobody know about it. You probably even, some people even think that God don't even see what they're doing. But God sees everything. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. Amen. Secret sin will cause your prayers to be hindered. Neglect of mercy. Are you merciful to God's people? Are you merciful to people, period? Despising the law iniquity, stubbornness, ouch. Do you know that stubbornness will cause your prayers to be hindered and unanswered? So where is that? Zechariah 7, 13. Self-indulgence. Indulgence. And also when you look at prayer, there are different postures of prayer. Some people prostrate themselves before the Lord and lay down before the Lord and pray, but they still standing up in their heart. Don't let your position of worship don't let your position of prayer and worship be one position and in your heart it's a different position. Not only posture yourself before the people and before God, don't do it as just an act of show. We are in services all the time and many times we see people get on the altar and begin to lay down before the Lord, but you can tell they're standing up in their heart. It's not real. God knows and he sees that. There's postures of prayer, kneeling, prostrating yourself before the Lord, standing, praying with your hands raised. But remember, whatever posture of prayer that you have, 
make sure that that posture is in your heart as well. God bless you, and I want to thank you so much for coming to Fire and Rain, for watching us today. It's been an awesome time sharing with you in the Word. Join us again next week at the same time for another awesome time in the Word, because remember, I have a Word for you from the Word. God bless you. Praise God. Isn't our God awesome? I trust that you have enjoyed today's message. Continue to let the Lord reign supreme in your life. For a list of additional teachings, email us at prophetesscross at yahoo.com and we will promptly respond to your request. God bless you.